stay-at-home dad Watching Disney movies he never had His daughter digs through all the VHS Crushing the classics in a princess dress Informed like Scuttle, Kurt's got your ticket Making it real like Jiminy Cricket Most are off the Captain Hook, but if the Tweedledum He'll be taking more shots than Bambi's mom Leaves him raised like Simba or cracked like the Beast Dishes He'll show you a whole new world You won't need free wish Stay at home, Disney Press play on Chip and Dale Rescue Rangers Crime Busters. It's a form of Rogers video rental tape, which means tracking issues, but we push forward through the scan lines and the hum. We jump right into it. Crime Busters, we get a musical intro. Sometimes some crimes slip through their fingers. I, I started making fun of this song, but it's actually a banger. Super catchy. I have a fleeting memory of this show. Like I remember the Australian Ginger Bumbler and the Blue Bug. Catteries not included are up first. Chip and Dale are dressed like Magnum P.I. and Indiana Jones. This one starts with everyone like dragging their feet on the carpet and shocking each other. Slow day at the rescue office, I guess. Bumbler Ozzy tries to steal some office guy's sandwich. Okay, this is the police chief and some little girl is asking him to find her kitty. She's crying and she leaves the office sniffling when he can't help her. But guess who can? The rangers steal the picture of the cat the little girl left with the lazy chief and they head to the ranger plane, but not before they use like spoons and mouse traps to catapult them there, that's fine. They meet up with the uh, babe mouse, what's her name, Gadget, and she's like, let's do it, let's go, she's all fired up. How do these two get anything done with her around? Okay, how does Chip get anything done staring at her all day? I'm gonna assume no one has explained to Dale what's what when it comes to women. They go to the little girl's house, and it's a clue! There's big animal tracks in the mud behind the house and giant claw marks on the windowsill, so they go to the alley and it's swarming with mice just living their best lives. They're playing surfing music and they're having a blast because all the local cats are suddenly gone. The rangers have to ruin the fun, so they cobble together this fake cat costume. It's straight out of my nightmares. And they scare all the mice away, but then they're thwarted by a giant robotic bulldog. This tape is asking me to accept a lot of things right now. We get the bumbler turned up to an 11 here. <clears throat> they stop RoboDog and they open him up with a screwdriver and they decide they can ride inside it. They join a team of other robot bulldogs and follow them back to the secret lair where all the cats are being kept in these cages. There's some mad scientist controlling the robot dogs. He's stealing all the cats in the city. This guy used to work for the power company. I don't know what his deal is. The bumbler says, let's just find the little girl's cat and go. Like, leave all the rest of these cats in captivity. Like, f*** them. They find the little girl's cat and they break it out. The cat's voice actor is super familiar. I think it's Nelson, like from The Simpsons, or like the monkey from Futurama. Uh, Chip says, let's beat it. Well, the beating's good. Mm-hmm. Girl Ranger wants to save all the cats. The giant claw machine wakes up and the stupid cat gets caught all over again. The giant hands suddenly start vigorously rubbing Chip and Dale and the bumbler says, What's it doing now? Trying to make friends? Oh, it's a callback. See, it's building up static electricity to shut down the city's power. That's why it needs all the cats to make static electricity make a big shock. Okay, that's pretty smart. The rangers steal the remote control that powers the, the controls the hands and hilarity ensues. They bounce some of the robot dogs like basketballs. They catch the evil scientist. The heroes load up all the cats and the scientist gets eaten by a robo dog. Uh, they return the cat to the little girl and she's excited. Spunky is the cat's name and Spunky is back. Another case closed with another happy ending. Monterey is the bumbler's name. Hey, up next we have Pirate Sea Under the Sea. Chip scolds Dale, why are you sleeping under a pile of peanuts? Gadget comes running because she didn't quite hear him correctly. Dale complains because he has to clean up. He begrudgingly starts to clean up and then he ends up in the garbage truck. See what you get when you try. Uh, they chase the garbage truck on a, ro on a motorized roller skate. They end up on a garbage barge. Uh, Gadget says there's something romantic about a sea voyage and Chip, who has no idea what she's trying to line up, just nonchalantly agrees with her and goes on his way. A barrel floats to the surface and there's pirates inside. They net Chip and Dale and pull them onto the barrel and then pull them underwater. The pirates' headquarters are in an upside down underwater ship and that's fun. That's good stuff. This whole scene gives off nothing but Little Mermaid vibes. I wonder if they use some of the movie backgrounds or something because it's also called Pirate Sea 
under the sea. So maybe that's a nod. Uh, we meet the pirates. They have puns for names. I didn't bother tracking them. Monterey and Gadget and the Bug are trying to find them. On the ship, Chip and Dale are treated like kings for some reason. They're drinking ale with all the pirates at the big table before they're going on a treasure hunt. Dale's excited and Chip says to Dale, Hold up, stupid! We can't go hunting for treasure. Dale is annoyed and the pirates make Dale the lead pirate for the hunt. They don't let him open this one door because that's where Billy the Squid is. Billy the Squid, which is a play on Billy the Kid who is not a pirate. Dale finds the treasure, but the pirates say, we have to leave it here so we can look for it and find it again next week, because this is what they do. Chip and Dale realize now that they've seen all the treasure, so they can never leave the ship. They have to live down there forever. Uh, the other three are making a submarine diving ship out of garbage, and now they're playing the music from Little Nemo, the Dream Master, the underwater level, an underrated game from the original Nintendo. I love all of this. They get to the underwater upside down ship and emerge in the treasure room, then the octopus chases them. This character is definitely recycled from other Disney shows. Zipper is the bug's name. Gadget is gonna build a new submarine uh, while Monterey and the bug find Chip and Dale. They make a joke about a diving barrel and I don't get it. The captain is making Chip and Dale walk the plank now because he's annoyed by them. Chick, Chip kicks Dale upside down. Unreal. Monterey dresses up like a pirate and pretends to be the pirate's boss. Long lost Lafitte. They get the 200 year old cabin boy to verify that this is indeed Captain Lafitte and it's pretty funny because he fools them all despite being an obvious fraud. This was a good scene. He frees Chip and Dale, the land lovers or land lubbers. I don't speak pirate. They bring out aged Cheddar though and that's Monterey's one weakness. He breaks character and goes after the cheese. They all get busted. Now they're all tied up and walking the plank. They summon Billy the Squid and it's that octopus thing from before. There's an elaborate like MacGyver-like sequence of events that free them and they need to get to the surface. They figure out that if they unload all the treasure, maybe the ship would float to the top. Again, rare attention to detail and storytelling in this episode. That's fun. They use the cannon to blast the treasure out of the ship and the ship floats up to the surface. It was a little more complicated than that, but I didn't want to type it all out because it happened so fast. The pirates uh, like the ship above water. They tied the squid to the top of their ship flagpole as everyone cheers because, let's Google this, how long can a squid survive out of water? Not for long, maximum 40 minutes in humid conditions unless if the surface and air are dry. Squids need water to breathe, therefore on land, uh, crawl is not only inconvenient but also dangerous. So we end with Billy the Squid dying a slow and excruciating death. Roll credits. That's what I think about. What do you think? What we have is a concern about Curtis Anderson. His interviewing style is not the best. His personal appearance is not the best. I was wondering if the man has some kind of a hold over the channel that uh, he's allowed to be employed for so long with the standards of journalism and personal appearance that he has. Thank you.